draw the glass box in the isometric view, which helps to track the locations of the surfaces. Let's focus on the given front and the right side view to see what kind of surfaces are given. Remember, to the inclined surface, it always appears as a foreshortened in the two principal view and the surface edge in the third view. So by counting the number of the inclined edges, we can know the number of the inclined surfaces in the model. In our case, we have A, B, and C as inclined surfaces in the model. To the rest of the surfaces, since they are the normal surfaces, we will be able to locate the true size of surface or the surface edges in the given two views. Mark all the surfaces and the surface edges as letters in the two given views. Remember, to a normal surface, if it is parallel to the front side of the glass box, you are going to see it as a true size in the front and a vertical edge in the right side. If it is parallel to the right side of the glass box, you are going to see it as a true size in the right side, but a vertical edge in the front. In our case, we also have a surface D, which is parallel to the top. So you see it as a horizontal edges in the front and the right side. Make sure you have all of the letters marked in the front and the right side. Since the surface F is already completed in the isometric, we can easily mark a number 4 and a number 3 on top of the surface F. And then starting from the 4, we can locate number 5 by checking the height, the width, and the depth, the three dimensions. Similarly, we can continue to locate the number 1 and the number 2 in the isometric view. Always keep in mind, you have to check the three dimensions, the height, the width, and the depth. Connect all of the numbers in a sequence order to see the foreshortened surface A in the isometric view. After that, we can locate the surface C, which involves number 1, 5, 1 prime, and 5 prime. Using number 1 and the number 5, to see where are the number one prime and five prime in the dense direction. Connect one, one prime, five prime, number five, to see the foreshortened surface C in the isometric view. Foreshortened surface B involve number one, number two, one prime, and two prime. In the dense direction, Check the 2 prime to see so how far 2 prime is from number 2. Have all the numbers connected to see the foreshortened surface B in the isometric view. Surface E is a normal surface, so check the height and the depth to complete surface E in the isometric view. Continue to see the surface D, which is a normal surface again. Check the width and the depth to complete the surface D. After surface D, we can continue with the surface G. Check the depth and the height from the two given views to complete the surface G. Don't forget your visible surface H in the isometric view, which shows as a very short visible edge next to the surface F. Now we can have the front faces of the right side and the top, the back faces of the right side and the top connected to form the 45 degree miter line. The 45 degree miter line can be used to transfer the damps from the right side to the top, or vice versa. Since the surface D is parallel to the top of the glass box, let's do the surface D first. 
after it, since the surface A is foreshortened, we have to rely on the numbers. Remember, the front and the top, they are aligned vertically, so the numbers should be aligned vertically. The top and the right side, they share the same depth, so the numbers from the right side can be projected to the 45 degree measure line and then continue to be located in the top. Once all of the numbers marked in the top, we can have them connected in a sequence order to see the foreshortened surface A in the top. Now we can switch to the foreshortened surface C. Surface C involves number one, number five, number five prime, number one prime. Locate one prime, five prime, and then have four numbers connected in a sequence order to see the foreshortened surface C. Surface B involves one, two, one prime, two prime. Once we have one prime, two prime connected, we can see the foreshortened surface B in the top. Don't forget the hidden features in the top. Once you have all of the normal surface edges marked in the top, remember to check the hidden lines. From the two corners, we can see the hidden features which must be marked as hidden lines in the top view.